So this is just going to be a very, very quick video because I know a few of you are currently struggling with cost, volume, profit analysis. Now, if you don't know what cost, volume, profit analysis is, it's basically used to determine how changes in costs and volume affect a company's operating income and net income. And in performing the analysis, there are several assumptions that are made. So the first one being sales price per unit is constant. Variable cost per unit are constant. Total fixed costs are constant. Everything produced is sold. Costs are only affected because activity changes. And if a company sells more than one product, they are sold in the same mix. So we're going to go ahead and have a look at break even point first. And the way to work that out is just to take the fits costs divided by the contribution per unit. So if we look at question one here, if we have product A selling for £60, variable cost per unit is £25 and total fits cost of 45000 per annum, then the number of units that we need to produce in order to break even is simply going to be the £60 minus the £25 and that gives you the contribution per unit. Now we're going to take the £45,000 and divide that by the contribution per unit. So that's going to give us 1,286 units. Now if we look at question two, what we see here is that product A sells for £90, there's a variable cost of 45 and fixed cost of 30,000 per annum. So if we take 30,000 pounds and then divide that by 90 minus 45, as you can see here, that gives us 667 units that we need to make in order to break even, i.e. work, costs and revenue equal nothing. Now, if we want to have a look at contribution per unit, that again is just the sales price per unit less the total variable cost per unit. So if you're given fits costs in a question, ignore the fits cost when you're working out the contribution per unit. And all we do there is take, for instance, this £60 per unit selling price minus the £25 variable, and that gives us contribution per unit of £35. And if we did the exact same thing again for question two, where we have the product selling for £90, variable cost of 45 you can see there that contribution per unit is 45 Now, if we have a look at margin of safety, if we look at that in units, we just take the budgeted sales units minus the break-even sales units. But if we look at it as a percentage, we take the budgeted sales units minus the break-even sales units and divide that by the budgeted sales units and just times by 100. So if we were to do that ourselves, we would get a break-even point of 1286. Because again, we know to work out the break-even point, you take the fixed cost of 45,000, divide that by contribution per unit, and contribution per unit is worked out by taking the sales price per unit minus the variable cost per unit. So we know we've got the break-even units of 1,286. So then what we need to do is work out the margin of safety in units and that's just going to be this 1500 budgeted sales units minus this 1286 and that gives you 214 units. Okay, so moving on to work out this percentage, all we're going to do, very, very simple, is we're just going to take that 214 units that we just worked out, divide that by the budgeted sales units of 1500 and times that by 100 to get your percentage. So the percentage is 14%. So that's our margin of safety in percentage. So if we look at question two down here and do the same thing again, what we're going to do is take this 30,000, so that's our fixed cost, divided by our contribution per unit, which is the 90 divided by 45. That gives us 667 units, which is again our break even point. So the margin of safety in units is just taking this 900 budgeted sales units minus a 667. And if we want to wear that as a percentage, all we need to do is take the 233 units and divide that by the 900 budgeted units times by 100 and that you can see there gives us 26 percent okay so next if you're ever asked in a question to work out budget to profit you might not see this in any books you might be thinking oh my word i don't know how to do that but it's actually really really simple so all we do is for instance with this one here where we've got product a selling for 60 and the variable cost of 25 we've got our fixed cost and our budgeted volume of sales so what we're going to do very 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 simple is we're going to go ahead and work out our contribution which is the 60 minus 25 and then we're going to times our contribution per unit by the sales units so the 1500 and then we're going to take off our fixed cost of 45,000 pound and that gives us 7,500. And if we want to replicate that again for question two, all we're doing there is taking the 90 minus 45 to work out contribution per unit, times it by the 900 budgeted sales volume, minus the 30,000 of fixed costs, and that gives us 10,500. So let's have a look at 
target profit. Now, what you might see in a question is that somebody wants to make a profit of X. So in this one, they've said they want to make a profit of £10,000. So they want to know how many units they need to make in order to make that profit of £10,000, taking into consideration how much they can sell the unit for and how much it costs to build the unit and any fits cost. So again, it's really simple. All we need to do is take the total fits cost, add them to the required profit, and then divide that by the contribution per unit. So if we did that very quickly, you'd see here, we're taking the fits cost of 45,000, we're adding on the 10,000 pounds profit that they want to make, and dividing that by 60 minus 25. And that gives us 11,286 units to make. So if we did that with question two, if we've got a product selling for 90, variable cost of 45, we've got expected sales of 900 and target profit of 20 grand. All we need to do is take the 20 grand plus the 30,000 pound fits costs and divide that by 90 minus 45. That gives us 20,667 units that we need to make in order to achieve that target profit. Next, we have what's known as the CS ratio, and that's just the contribution per unit over the sales value per unit. And it's really, really simple. So if you're given this information again, where you've got the product A selling for 60 pound, the variable cost per unit of 25, all you do is you just take the 60 minus 25 to get to the contribution, divide by 60. So that gives you 0.58. And sometimes you're asked to put that as a percentage. So again, that's really, really simple. So you just times that by 100 and that gives you 58%. So if we did that again for question two, what we would get there is a CS ratio of 50%. Because again, if you do 90 minus 45 divided by 90, you're going to get 50 or 0 0.5. And I've just developed this little graph down here for you just to show you and give you a little bit more understanding so you can picture this a little bit better in your mind of where the break even point is on a graph. So you can see right here, this little blue dot, the break even point is where your sales and your costs added together equals nil profit. Now here you can see fixed costs are one line going across because they're not changing no matter how much volume you're making as you go along the bottom there. So whether you make 10,000 units, 70,000 units, it doesn't matter. Fits costs are not going to change. Whereas your variable costs in this little pink bit here, they're going to increase based on how much volume you're creating. So you can see there that you've got a loss area and you've got a profit area just here. So I hope you found this video useful. Do consider subscribing as always, and I shall see you on the next video.